Today at Speedy's Garage, we're going to be shortening the sway bar end links on Project Orange Crush. Okay, to get this done, you're getting a jack, some jack stands, and a wheel chock. I also used impacts because uh, it makes things quicker and faster. You'll need a 15 and 16 millimeter box end wrenches, a torque wrench, 15 millimeter socket, and you might need one of these crow foot adapters for your torque wrench. Uh, I needed a 16 millimeter one to get it done on mine. If you don't have a set of these, they're pretty inexpensive and they come in real handy when access is limited. A while back I picked up some weld racing wheels to use at the track with my Hoosier Slicks. They're 17 by 10 wheels and because of the back spacing, uh, they make contact with the sway bar just a little bit when you're installing them. Uh, you can still get the wheels installed uh, at the track when the car on jack stands, or on the jack rather, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. And when you're at the track, you don't you want to simplify things as much as possible. So the idea is to shorten the sway bar end links, and it'll pull the sway bar down enough to clear that 17 inch diameter wheel. And then you can just put them on like a normal wheel at the track without having to use two jacks or something underneath the A-arm. Uh, we learned over time <clears throat> when people start running adjustable end links or changing sway bars that this was a viable solution. This seems to only be a problem with the weld racing wheels. If you get the Bogarts, which are a little bit more expensive, uh, their back spacing seems to be set up to clear the sway bar. But again, it's not a big deal. I'm probably going to take an inch or so out of the sway bar end link to fix the problem. I'm going to start by getting the car up on jack stands so we can remove the wheels. Make sure you chalk the front tires for safety. And next, we want to remove the wheels. There you can see the problem. The wheel is mounted, but it, you can't get the bolts all the way tightened down because the sway bar is in the way. So what we're going to do is shorten this end link right here. And what it'll do is it'll pull the sway bar down so that it clears that wheel and it will have a very negligible effect on any handling or any other problems. Remove the 16 millimeter nut from the back of the top of the sway bar end link. It's a 15 on the front that you'll need to hold still and do it on both sides and it'll let the sway bar move freely so you can get it adjusted to clear the wheel and you can make a mark on the end link to know how much you're going to need to trim. Okay, I mounted the wheel with one lug nut on the very top and one on the very bottom so that it's securely attached to the hub. I've moved the sway bar around to where it is just barely not touching, like an eighth of an inch. If you got an eighth of an inch, you got a mile when it comes to something like this. And you can see where the Pushing is going to need to be to line up with the sway bar. We're going to need to trim right about an inch out of the sway bar end link, and I'll make some marks on this with a silver sharpie, and then we can do some trimming and then weld it back together. Now I actually mounted a wheel on both sides to double check to make sure they would both be the same, and mine were. They came out to right at an inch that needs to be removed. Don't assume that just because mine needed an inch taken out that yours will match. This car has an Eibach Pro Kit suspension on it. That affects how much the sway bar end links need to be trimmed, as well as this being an RT, the weight of the car, etc., etc. So make sure that you check yours before you start cutting and welding things. This is one of those deals where you want to measure three times and cut once. Now that we've got everything measured, just take the sway bar end links totally off the car. And to keep up with the nuts and bolts, I always put them back together so that I know what went where. So here are the sway bar end links after cutting and welding. I don't do enough welding to trust myself to do this properly on a car that's going to see 130 miles an hour in the quarter mile at the track. So I dropped these off to a local shop. They took care of it for me uh, for $30 of labor, which was a half hour. Uh, he welded it up nice, ground the welds down and dressed them and then even hit it with a shot of black paint to finish them off so they're ready to go back on the car. Not only do you have to be careful with the welding itself, but you want to be careful not to put too much heat into this area and melt the bushing by mistake. So like I said, I just don't have enough experience welding to, to trust myself to do that, and it was worth $30 for the peace of mind just to drop it off and have it done. So now they're ready to go back on the car. Installation is just the reverse of removal. You take the shortened end link and note the orientation so it's outside of the sway bar, the bolt comes through the back, or through the front rather, then your nut goes on the back. The bolt is 15 millimeter, uh, the back is 16, and then at the bottom, there's a longer bolt 
it goes on the bottom and it goes through the front. What you want to notice is the washer is what goes up against your bushing. And then it goes through the bottom and then your nut goes on the back of this. The torque spec on these is 45 foot-pounds. What I'm probably going to do is do the top first because I can move it up to get tools on it. And then I'll come down and hit the bottom to make it easier. Now you won't be able to fully tighten this bolt to its full spec until you get the bottom one in because it starts to bind at 45 foot-pounds. So I would just snug it so you still have some movement and then put your bottom one in and get ready to start torquing them down. Now because of clearance on the top here, the uh, backside bolt's really close to the hub and I couldn't get a uh, socket on there. I used a crow foot adapter for my torque wrench and it worked out great. Don't panic if you don't have one of these. After you tighten up the bottom, you can put a jack underneath here and compress the suspension. Um, I would think enough to give you clearance to that bolt or give you access to it anyway. Uh, worst case scenario, you just put a couple of box end wrenches on it and just tighten it real tight. It's only 45 foot pounds, so it's not a lot. And these nuts are captive, so when they go on, they're actually locking on to the, uh, to the bolt anyway. Now, when I was talking about being careful measuring and cutting on this end link, the only real risk is cutting it too short and having it come into contact with your hub here. Now, keep in mind, the suspension is completely drooped, so it would still only be an issue when you were trying to, to jack the car up and take the wheels on and off. I've probably got... Oh, about a half inch of clearance between the bolt and the hub um, and that's what the suspension droop like I said it is on it is on jack stands and so when it's at ride height this is going to be up here somewhere but if you don't want to have to worry about that making contact when you're changing wheels be careful about how much you cut the end link okay as you can see our race wheel is now fully seated on the hub and you can see we are easily clearing the sway bar by about a quarter of an inch. So mission accomplished. Now reinstall your wheels and snug the lug nuts down. Lower the car and torque the lug nuts to 110 foot-pounds. With the car at ride height, inspect the suspension to make sure nothing's making contact, and then go for a test drive to check your work. The test drive went well and didn't show any problems, so I'm gonna call this modification complete. If you'd like to see more information and how-to videos, visit my website, www.speedysgarage.net.